every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Your chances seem brighter just knowing champions are made, not born. It happens. Take Harvey Keene, top-notch shortstop for the Detroit Tigers. When Harvey was just a lad of six, he was learning baseball tricks. He trapped those grounders, learned to throw. And this is something you should know. A Wheaties breakfast helped him grow. Now Harvey sparks that tiger team, because Wheaties keep him on the beam. Harvey Keene, a Wheaties guy since he was six years old. He knows there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Watch Harvey chase this hot one. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hey! A few miles from Brownsville, Texas, was a large cotton plantation owned and operated by Sam Jeffers, a man of questionable character and background who had acquired his land by cheating, stealing, and at times open violence. One day, as Jeffers sat at his desk in the plantation house, two of his men entered. Well, I've enlisted a few more woolen workers, boss. <laughs> Those peons seem mighty anxious to be cotton pickers. See, si, Senor Jeffers, we shall soon have enough of them. Don't you think it's about time you told us what the deal is, Sam? What about the ship you're waiting for? Where's it going to take the armories we're holding? Sit down, I'll tell you. Well, uh, listening, I sailed as mate on a slaver a few years ago. We put in at Safi, a port of French Morocco. I met a Frenchman named Cabot who'd been an army officer but got thrown out for making cash on the side in the slave trade. Go on. Dealing in slaves became a crime, and it wasn't possible to get any more out of Africa. Cabot got hold of a ship. Then he had a bright idea. Well? He visited Mexico once and decided it would be easy to grab a lot of the poverty-stricken peons, sneak them into Morocco, and sell them as slaves to the Arabs. Well... Juan recruits them in Matamoros and sneaks them across the border. <laughs> si, senor... They listen to my promise of many silver dollars and follow me like sheep. It's mighty risky business, especially with American naval ships patrolling the Gulf. <laughs> Cabo is used to slipping through blockades. I'm sure he can stay clear of the Navy. Don't worry. Everything will go all right, just so you men do your part. That afternoon, one who had gone into Brownsville left the general store and walked toward his horse at the hitch rack. Senor, wait. Senor, I'm so glad to see you. Uh, you are glad to see me, eh? <laughs> that is good. But I do not know you, senorita. I am Marietta Marino from Matamoras across the river. Two weeks ago, you talked to my brother Carlos in front of our house. I saw you, senor. You have mistaken me for someone else, senorita. I have not been to Mother Morris for a month, nor do I know your brother Carlos. That is not the truth, senor. You are the one I remember. Also a neighbor and friend of Carlos went with you that time to pick the cotton. Where are they now? You must tell me. You are upset, senorita. People are watching. I do not know what you are talking about. You do know. You do, senor. You are the one my brother went away with. I have not a time to waste with you. Get out of my way. Oh. Hey, you not hey, some woman. Man. And you do not interfere, Indian. Get away. You take this. No. Oh. Oh, sure. You'll knock me down, eh? Now I kill you. Uh, you're not wrong. 
Man of life, what a quick draw. Yeah, that Indian's there. Juan stood a moment glaring angrily at Toto. The determined look on the Indian's face and the firmly held guns caused the Mexican to back down. Yeah. Bueno, I have no time to continue this street brawl, Indian. But sometime we will meet again. Andale, andale. Good for you, Indian. Yeah, you made him back down fast. Uh, him plenty mean fella. Gracias. Gracias, senor Indian. You are so very brave. If not good, him treat woman mean. He is an evil one. He lied to me about my brother and his friends. Huh? Me not savvy. Marietta told Toto her story. She finished by exclaiming, I am sure he is the hombre who took my brother and our neighbor away to pick the garden. I am most positive, senor Indian. I am much worried about Carlos. He promised to meet me at the hotel. Three times I have been there, but my brother did not meet me. Now that hombre says he does not know Carlos. Mm, that's not good. Uh, maybe if me follow fella, me find out where and take your brother. Oh, senor Indian, if you would do that for me, I... Uh, me do it. I will wait at the hotel in the lobby until you come back. I am so anxious about Carlos. Uh, me be back soon. Me go now, trail fella. Toto, moved by the woman's tears, went to the hitch rack, determined to get news of her brother. Easy, easy, fella. Get him up, Come. Juan left a clear trail so that Toto had no trouble following him to the plantation. As the Indian turned in toward the house... Who's come? Oh, fella. Oh, well, well, well. I have you covered, Indian. What are you doing here? Well, me come look for Mexican, fella. I'm not letting him get away, Ray. Oh, 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 oh. I was just going into the house when I heard the shot. I was warning this snooping in there. Wait, Senor Ray. This is the Indian who knocked me down in Brownsville. He has come here looking for more trouble, no? No, me not hunt trouble. Woman say you take brother to pick cotton. Me come find out about brother. So that is it, eh? You have come snooping. Keep your hands raised, Indian. We shall take you to Senor Jeffers. Then you will talk to Carlos and work with him. Take his guns, Ray. I shall keep him covered. All right. There you go. Good. Give them to me. Yeah. Now we shall go to see Senor Jeffers. Right ahead of us, Indian. Get him up, Scout. Underlay, get The Lone Ranger waited at his camp in the nearby hills for Toto to return from town. When the sun began to set, he disguised his features. Then, without his mask, he started for town to find his Indian friend. Easy, city big fella. Move Later, in front of the hotel, he inquired about Toto and learned of the scuffle with Juan. As he turned to go to the hit track, Marietta, who was on the hotel porch and had heard his inquiry, called to him. Senor! Senor, I must speak to you. What is it, senorita? Marietta introduced herself. Then she briefly told the Lone Ranger about her brother and his friend going away with Juan to get work in the cotton fields. She related how she had recognized Juan and asked about Carlos and how Toto had come to her aid and trailed Juan. She was emphatic as she exclaimed, He lied when he said he knew nothing about my brother. Oh, you must find them, senor, you must. They left by the north train. You wait at the hotel, Marietta, and don't worry. I'll find them somehow. Easy, steady, big fella. Adios. Adios. Montelier. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from... Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go-power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. 
Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger left town on the North Trail. He found that many others had used the trail during the afternoon so that Tonto's tracks were covered. Many farms bordering on the North Trail raised cotton, and he had no way of knowing to which place Tonto may have followed the Mexican Marietta had mentioned. Darkness fell, and the Lone Ranger decided to return to camp in hopes that Tonto may have gone there. Montilla! Meanwhile, a messenger arrived at Jeffers' house with the information that the slave ship had dropped anchor. Jeffers hurriedly gave orders to Juan and Ray. We have to work fast. The whole deal must be accomplished tonight, so the ship will be able to sail at dawn. Hey, Senor Jeffers, it is not very far to the shore where the sailors will be waiting with boats. Load the payons and that Indian into the wagon and start as soon as possible. I'll ride ahead to tell Cabot they're on the way. We'll get them there, don't worry. The rest of the men will go all on horseback to guard them. Come on, Juan, we got plenty of work to do. Within an hour, the enslaved men were loaded onto the wagons. Tonto, his feet shackled with chains so that he could take only short steps, was in the last wagon. Meanwhile, when the Lone Ranger found out Tonto hadn't returned to camp, he again rode into town to talk to Marietta, who persuaded the Lone Ranger to let her help in the search along the North Trail. The moon was clear and bright by the time the Lone Ranger and Marietta reached the entrance to Jeffers' house. Oh, oh, oh. Senor, why do you stop here? There are no lights in that house back there. Yes, so I notice. The wheel marks of several wagons come from there and turn north here on the trail. Those marks weren't here when I came this way earlier. Come on, Silver. Yes. About half a mile beyond Jeffers' place, the wagons had turned southward on a cross trail heading for the coast. When the Lone Ranger and Marietta reached the cross trail, they turned to follow the wagons, then stopped. Oh, oh. Why do we stop here? You see the big fella? I saw something. The Lone Ranger walked several yards down the cross trail then reached down and picked up the object which had caught his eye. Oh, Toto's beaded headband. Senor, you find something, no? I found this. My Indian friend Toto must be with those wagons. He managed somehow to drop this unnoticed. We must have known I'd try to find him. Well, now what do we do? We'll follow the wagons. Easy, said big fella. Come on, the It was a short trip to the shore. And when the wagons arrived, Jeffers was waiting with Cabot near some rowboats drawn up on the sand. Well, Juan, you made good time getting here. Uh, this is Mr. Cabot, the man I told you about. Well, it's here. Yeah. We ran into a bad storm. We have lost all but three small lifeboats. And they will take only a few men at a time to the ship, Jeffers. It's some distance, so you must work quickly. Even then, it will take most of the night to load them. We'll have them all aboard by dawn, Cabot. I shall go back in the first boat and see that the prisoners are stowed away properly in the hold we have prepared for them. I send the rest of the crew to help your men here. Good, good. You come aboard with the last load, Monsieur Jeffers. Then I shall pay you the cash. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Marietta reached a low bluff overlooking the Gulf. <laughs> He saw the activity on the beach and realized what was taking place. I will have to act fast. I'll write a message. You take it to the telegraph office in Brownsville. Senor have him telegraph it to the captain of a naval vessel that's anchored at Corpus Christi. Also, I'll give you a message to the sheriff in Brownsville. Now, here's the money to pay for the telegram. But what are you going to do, senor? I'm going aboard that ship and do what I can to stop it from sailing until help arrives. <laughs> After the Lone Ranger hurriedly wrote the notes, Marietta left for Brownsville. Then, hidden by a ridge, the Lone Ranger rode down along the shoreline to a point that jutted out into the bay. Oh, 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 then dived into the water. As the Lone Ranger approached the ship, he saw men unloading boats on the shore side. So he swam to the opposite side, where he noticed a rope hanging over the rail. Making as little noise as possible, he grasped the rope, then pulled himself up hand over hand. 
glance showed there was no one in sight along the deck. He pulled himself over the rail. Quickly, he unwrapped his guns and found them dry. Then, still disguised, he moved along in the shadows toward the prow of the ship. The ship's captain stood alone on the forward deck, watching the boats unload alongside. Suddenly, he heard a noise behind him. Hey, he turned to face a figure in wet clothes. What is this? Shut up. That uniform may come in handy. Quickly, the Lone Ranger dragged the unconscious captain into the shadows and tied and gagged him. Then the Lone Ranger hurriedly dressed in the uniform and put on the skipper's cap. Now to locate Toto. Now, disguised as the captain, the Lone Ranger walked openly onto the forward deck. From that vantage point, he saw Jeffers' men taking the prisoners down a ladder into a hold amidships. He waited until the men leapt for another boatload. Then he quickly went to the open hatch above the hold and looked down. A lighted lantern hung from the ceiling. The Lone Ranger saw that the leg chains had been attached to iron rings below, so that the men couldn't escape and were left unguarded for the time being. His keen eyes noticed keys hanging nearby. He took them and went down the ladder and unlocked the irons that held Toto. There, that does it. Men, come again, Kim. I'll put the key back for now. You pretend to be in chains. Let her use the key to release the others. Uh, the Lone Ranger quickly went up the ladder and replaced the keys on the nail, just as one and two others brought more prisoners. The shadows on deck hid the Lone Ranger's face, as one stopped a moment and spoke. No, there you are, Captain. The Frenchman, Mr. Gahou, wants to see you in his cabin. Good. Get down there, you men. Get going. Oh, no. time, the Lone Ranger hid on deck and watched as the boats made their trips back and forth from shore. Finally, as the last boat left the beach, he heard a distant commotion. <laughs> Look, riders on the beach. The Lord will be in for two days. Yeah. 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 I'd better get Mr. Capoe and the captain. Hey. Capoe has to give orders to sail. Yeah. The Lone Ranger waited until the man passed his hiding place. Then, making sure he wasn't seen, he followed. A few moments later, the man stopped before Cabot's cabin. I'll talk to Cabot for you. <laughs> the Lone Ranger quickly pulled the man out of sight. Then he returned and knocked on the cabin door. Come in, Captain. I heard the commotion on the shore. Did you get all this? Sacre bleu, you are not the captain. That's right. I found out your head man around here, Cabot. These guns say this ship doesn't sail for a while. Do not turn around, amigo. My gun is at your back. I came to sail Cabo and heard you speak in here. Drop the guns. Stop them, quick. I shall kick them away. But... Uh, no, senor. Turn around so that I can see your face. Right. As the Lone Ranger turned, he suddenly dropped one hand, grasping one's gun wrist. Yes. Oh. With the other, he struck a hard blow to the Mexican's chin. That settles him for the moment. Now, Mr. Cabo. As the Lone Ranger turned toward Cabo, the Frenchman drew his sword. Stand there, monsieur. I shall run you through with my sword. You are unarmed. The Lone Ranger glanced down at the gun Juan had dropped. Then his eyes glimpsed a pair of cross swords on the wall just inside the door. He suddenly sprang back and took one. All right, Cabo. Come on. You crude Americans do not know the use of this sword. I'm an expert, monsieur. I'm down. As the Lone Ranger crossed swords with Cabo, he realized he was fighting for his life against a well-trained adversary. But he, too, had been trained to the use of the blade, and he pressed forward, hoping to gain the advantage. At first, Cabo parried thrust after thrust. You do well. Not well enough. And for a few moments, they seemed well matched. Then gradually, by the swiftness and dexterity of his blows, and by the continual use of a brilliant thrust and parry, the Lone Ranger forced his amazed and perspiring foe back across the room until he pressed against the far wall. The speed and skill with which the Lone Ranger handled his sword was too much for Cabo. And a moment later, the Frenchman's weapon yeah. went flying from his grasp. Wait, wait! You're not going to be true, monsieur! The naval ship. That's what I've been waiting for. They'll take care of you, Cabo. Now face the wall. The Lone Ranger quickly picked up his guns and holstered them. He set the sword aside, and keeping his eye on Cabo, he took Toto's guns from the unconscious Mexican one. All right, Cabo, turn around. We're going on deck now, and I'll be right behind you. This time I have guns. Go on, up on deck. In the hold, Toto had managed to free all the peons, as some of the slavers rushed down to open a side hatch. For the purpose of shoving them still shackled into the sea, the prisoners now freed, surprised them, and took their weapons. Jeffers, Juan, and their men had rushed for the small boats and started away from the ship. But they were soon captured by sailors from the naval vessels. 
soon the naval vessel moved alongside the ship and took full charge. Those crooks who had managed to reach shore were picked up by the sheriff and his posse. Later on the beach, the Lone Ranger, once again wearing his mask, watched with the naval officer and Tonto as Marietta and her brother Carlos embraced. Marietta's brother and the others will testify against Tempest, Kembo, and their men. You did a fine job, my friend. Good thing you arrived when you did, Commander. They might have succeeded in spite of us. Commander, my brother and I have thanked you so much. But we owe much thanks, too, to a man on a white horse who discovered what was being done. I'm glad your brother is safe. Adios, Commander. We'll see you again. Easy, steady, big fellow. Let's go, Tonto. Come on, sit there. That is the same hombre. I know his voice. But why is he masked, Commander? Who is he? (laughs) He's a man all America is proud of, Senorita. A true American who always fights for the rights of others. He's known as the Lone Ranger.